Hello everyone. Ito si Pia Granada, Rep Raptor Reporter. Nandito tayo ngayon sa Glasgow, United Kingdom para i-cover ang last few days ng COP26 or the 26, 26 Conference of Parties of the UNFCCC. So ito yung Agreement on Climate Change na binuo ng United Nations. So um, yung COP26 basically patapos na siya. Uh, actually today dapat yung last day, uh, Friday, November 12. Pero uh, usually naman sa mga conferences na ganito, uh, bihira na na mag-end on time kasi marami pang pag-uusapan, marami pang pending na pag-uusapan. So, ang uh, expectation dito actually ay na mag uh, hanggang Saturday, hanggang bukas ito, possibly even Sunday, nangyari na yun sa mga dating COP, dating summits. So, uh, we will just be waiting and seeing um, kung kailan talaga matatapos itong conference na to. But, um, since ito yung scheduled last day, supposed last day of the COP, uh, gusto natin magbigay ng updates dun sa nangyari na dito, uh, particularly kung ano ang gusto ng Pilipinas. So ano dapat ang panoorin or i-monitor ng mga Pilipino dito sa pag-uusap pag dito sa COP26. At alam natin na ang Pilipinas isang developing nation at isang vulnerable nation then climate vulnerable nation tayo. So may mga specific tayo na gustong makita doon sa kalabasan ng COP26. So ano-ano ang mga ito at ano na ba ang nangyari dito sa pag-uusap ng mga over uh, almost 200 countries who are um, here right now in, in Glasgow to fashion out a, a final deal, isang out outcome document, isang outcome agreement from this climate summit. So, okay, uh, let's see. So basically, um, today, this morning, may lumabas na new draft, new draft agreement or new draft document that basically shows kung ano na ang, uh, basically yung parang uh, na-agree on na ng mga 200 countries dito and likely ay lalabas dun sa final draft document. So, ang tawag sa draft doc, ang tawag sa, sa document na yun ay cover decision, COP26 cover decision, at um, yung formal name niya ay 1.CP26. Now, um, ano yung nakasulat doon sa, sa document na yun? Um, I will divide my explainer into three, and these three are siguro the most important things about the document, especially for Filipinos. So, number one is mitigation, which is basically uh, the way we mitigation is basically how we reduce carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions from the atmosphere. So alam natin na ba yung pag uh, pag-init ng planeta ay dahil sa greenhouse gases na nagagather sa atmosphere natin and yung effort basically ng mga countries ay uh, paliitin ang emissions natin para hindi na uminit pa ang mundo. So yun ang mitigation. Yung climate finance naman, yun yung parang uh, funding na kailangan ng mga bansa para makapag-reduce ng emissions nila, number one. At number two, para mag-survive dun sa mga climate change impacts like super typhoons, um, drought, uh, you know, mga, mga sea level rise. So, yun yun. Um, loss and damage rin is a third issue. And this naman is about um, coping with effects of climate change na masyadong malaki, masyadong damaging para parang no matter how much you prepare for it, talaga magkaka-loss and damage tayo. So, so, dun sa mitigation, right, yung, yung long-standing goal is to make sure that we are able to reduce emissions enough so that the world will not warm by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. So, yung dun sa draft document, isang win, isang panalo para sa, sa mundo ay may explicit mention of fossil fuels. Kasi dati, sa mga UN Climate Summit Agreements, talagang walang mention of fossil fuels, which is weird, ba? Given that, um, given that fossil fuels, basically, is the cause of global warming. So for the first time, there is mention of fossil fuels in, um, may possible mention of fossil fuels in a, in a climate summit agreement. Um, it's already an agreement, but basically a decision. Hindi siya parang Paris Treaty iba siya. But still, it's a big deal, right? So um, but dun sa latest draft na nakita natin, na dilute yung wording dun sa fossil fuels. Kasi nakasulat na dun, um, na dati kasi straight na ano eh accelerate the phase out of coal and subsidies of fossil fuels. So, diba, simple, it's straight to the point, it's clear. So, dun sa latest draft na lumabas kaninang umaga, weaker na siya. Paano? Kasi, sinabi dito na accelerating the phase out of unabated coal power and of inefficient subsidies for fossil fuels. So, bakit siya weaker? Kasi, parang kinakualify na yung, yung i-phase out lang ay unabated coal power, not coal power like flat. So that means that unabated kasi it means um, coal power na pwedeng ma-capture 
uh, ng, ng mga machines or mga facilities, carbon capture and storage. So, sinasabi basically ng new draft is, um, if we phase out lang natin yung coal power na hindi maka-capture ng mga machines. And alam natin na itong promise na to is very tenuous kasi yung 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 technology to capture carbon hindi pa siya ganun ka develop and hindi pa siya ganun ka mainstream. So um yung for example, right now yung global operation ng ng technology na to is currently just 0.1% of annual global emissions from fossil fuels. So imagine that yung kanilang technology na sinasabing uh, gagamitin, hindi pa nga masyadong nagamit, 0.1% lang of global emissions yung naka-capture ng technology na to. And yet, we are already putting this in an agreement um, and kumbaga relying on this on this technology. So, yung isa pang uh, delusion is yung use of the word inefficient to refer to subsidies for fossil fuels. Kasi, nung previous agreement, straight eh, basta wala nang subsidies for fossil fuels. Dun sa new draft, um, quinolify nila na uh, yung inefficient subsidies lang yung tatanggalin. So, di ba weird yun? Kasi parang, uh, so what's efficient subsidies? Right? So, yan. Um, isa pang wala pa dun sa draft, isang disappointment is wala pa yung um, annual rolling review of emission reduction targets. So, gusto na mga bansa ito, basically, dapat every year meron tayong accounting uh, uh, enough pa ba yung, yung pledges natin to reduce carbon emissions or kailangan damihan pa. So, uh, mas maganda, sabi ng developing countries, kung annual itong itong um, itong review. So, walang language walang language na ganun dun sa draft decision. Um, next, uh, isang isang win though, a small win, would be um, under mitigation, there is now um, longer mention of the kind of ecosystems which have to be protected um, because they serve as carbon sinks. Kumbaga, because they help absorb carbon emissions from the atmosphere. Um, so, may mention na of terrestrial and marine ecosystems whereas before, um, may mention lang yung forests. So, okay yan kasi, uh, kumbaga, may explicit mention that we have to also protect coral reefs, we also have to protect other types of um, carbon sinks, not just forests. Um, and also, meron ding inad na phrase, while ensuring social and environmental safeguards. So, that's important because obviously, we, while we want to, um, uh, you know, like, treat forests as carbon sinks and ecosystems as carbon sinks, we also have to safeguard the communities who rely on these ecosystems and make sure their rights are protected. So, yun ang importante doon. Next, um, climate finance. So, na-retain yung text on um, the concern of developed of developing nations that developed countries, the richer countries, are not meeting their promise to provide $100 a year, $100 billion a year for developing countries. Um, it says that there should be much bigger financial pledges after 2025, which is good. Um, and also, uh, yun, so basically, na-retain yung call, yung aggressive call, na dapat palakihin ng mga mas mayayamang bansa yung financial support for developing countries who can't afford Right, a lot of the um, technology on mitigation or efforts to to survive climate change. So yon. Pero um, malaking gap rin pa rin ang nasa, ang nasa draft kasi uh, according to developed countries, what they actually need isn't just 100 billion dollars a year. In fact, in the, may report that says that um, lahat ng needs of develop, developing countries uh, is actually six trillion dollars from 2020 to 2030. So if you divide that $6 trillion, that comes out to $600 billion um, over 10 years. $600 billion a year for 10 years. So diba, $600 billion versus $100 billion, malaki yung gap. So, um, problema dito is many developing countries say that if wala yung, yung sufficient financial support, wala lahat, pati mitigation. Kasi sinasabi niya, nila, we cannot reduce our emissions if we do not have financial support. So, um, for example, yung, yung, yung pledge ng Pilipinas uh, to reduce our emissions by 75% by 2030, 96% um, of that is dependent on aid from richer countries. So, basically, if hindi magbigay ng pera yung international community, hindi natin mag-meet yung target na yun, yung 75% reduction in carbon emissions. So, um, so, some countries, like some African countries, are saying that without the $6 trillion or um, another amount basa in the trillions, uh, wala, no go, no go, no deal, basically. So, that's a big, 
gap in the in the decision and we're waiting for updates on that um if magkaka uh more ambitious um pledges from the richer nations so the last the last bit that we're watching out for is the issue of loss and damage so like i said earlier loss and damage refers to the um types of climate change impacts that are so devastating that no no amount of adaptation or finance can really prepare a country for the kind of loss and devastation that that climate hazard can wreak on on the on the country so um may isang ngo dito called echo and they basically watch the climate negotiations uh they they're saying that this loss and damage issue is the litmus test for cop 26 so uh basically they're watching if developed countries can deliver on this kasi pa, kumbaga, kung wala ito, failure yung COP26. That's what they're saying. So, the good thing is, uh, dun sa new draft that we saw this morning, it's much longer, the loss and damage um, portion. And number one, one difference is it may, may insertion of the word demand-driven to describe the kind of technical assistance that developing developed countries should give developing countries. So, pag sinabing demand-driven, it means that um, it's the developing countries who have to decide what uh, what they need, right? It shouldn't be the donors who will decide what the the vulnerable country needs. So that's logical, right? And that's good that it's there. Um, it also decides, yung new wording is decides that basically the COP26 decides that Santiago Network will be supported by technical assistance facility to provide financial support for technical assistance through the Santiago Network. So itong Santiago Network, basically it's a platform that catalyzes support technical assistance from you know rich nations from from multilateral institutions banks um, other donors and funnels it channels it towards uh, poorer nations so maganda tong santiago network and basically the flesh out mas na flesh out pa yung santiago network dito sa bagong draft na nakita natin this morning um the the draft also urges developed countries to provide so to provide funds for the technical faci technical facility and for the operation of Santiago Network. So again, it's just fleshing out some more that the Santiago Network needs um, financing, it needs a secretariat, it needs an institutional architecture so that it can really operate and do its job. So maganda yan kasi kumbaga hindi na siya empty shell. It's something that can work and can really deliver for vulnerable countries. Um, so uh, alam rin natin, isang development na nalaman natin from our sources is that um, last night, late last night, may bagong wording na ipropropose, na propose ang developing countries, specifically the G77 and China group. So the, the Philippines is part of this group and basically that group proposed a new um, financial mechanism or no, a new finance facility for loss and damage. So they want to name this the Glasgow Loss and Damage Finance Facility. And the importance of this facility is that it, it's supposed to, kumbaga parang siya yung fund para sa loss and damage. And um, sinuport siya ng developing country groups. Uh, ministers of developing countries express support for this proposal of the Philippines and other developing countries. Even Mexico, who is not part of the G77 group, supported it. But in oppose siya ng United States and European Union. So as you can see, there is this parang clash talaga of interests where the EU, e, US and EU developed nations um, are opposing this new finance facility being put forward by the developing nations. Um, and there are reasons for that. Eh. Like some developed nations think na, oh, marami naman sa inyo dyan sa grupo ay develop, uh, parang mayaman rin naman kayo, like may kaya naman kayo, but di nyo nalang i-fund ang sarili yung loss and damage. Um, or sinasabi na rin na meron namang existing finance mechanisms under uh, things like adaptation and mitigation and pwede namang hugutin yung pera from those. Pero ang sinasabi kasi ng mga developing countries, hindi pwedeng hugutin yan from those sources kasi edi mawawalan kami ng pera for mitigation, for adaptation. Mawawalan kami ng pera for, um, for example, transitioning to renewable energy which is equally important. So um, sinasabi na dapat distinct, distinct yung financing for loss and damage. Um, Sinasabi rin ng ECHO, yung NGO nga who's, who monitors these developments um, para gumana, para talaga maging effective yung itong loss and damage facility na pinapropose ng, ng um, developing countries. Kailangan, um, kailangan may 
may annual finance gap report kung saan sinasabi ng dapat kumbaga parang tinatrack ng report na ito kung ano pa yung gaps between the financial needs of um, developing countries in terms of loss and damage and the finance available to them. Sinasabi rin ng ECO na dapat may nakatinatrack siya in a tabular format, kailangan part siya ng global stock take, and um, finally, it really has to be distinct from adaptation and mitigation, which are the two recognized pillars in UN Climate Summits. Um, they want a third pillar, basically, which is the loss and damage pillar. So, um, yun, alam natin na ang mga, mga, mga Pilipino ay actually very key to, these, to this discussion on loss and damage. So that's something to be proud of. No? Mga kababayan natin uh, actually really help um, hash out the Santiago Network. They're the ones who are really pushing for a new funding mechanism for loss and damage. And you know, loss and damage is so important for the Philippines because we are really the ones who e experience like typhoons that um, eat a chunk out of our GDP. Kumbaga, the Philippines has already entered the era of loss and damage. Hindi, hindi siya parang guni-guni lang or parang um, theoretical. No, we're experiencing these kinds of really devastating climate impacts. And um, in fact, even developed nations are already experiencing it, right? Like last year, we had freak storms and flooding in, in America. We had it in Germany, so in China. So these, these, these things, this has to be recognized by, by ministers here, by negotiators. And... Um, I think, and we're all waiting to see if um, yon makaka makaka shift ba in tone and uh, ano na yung final draft, ano na yung final agreement na uh, nalalabas from this COP26. So um, as always, uh, Rapper will be here um, in Glasgow monitoring the developments of the summit. We will give you updates on, um, for example, new maybe new versions of the draft that will come out. Um, the Philippines and other developing countries had a meeting earlier this morning to talk about and how they will strategize and get that that crucial wording that they want in the final text so we will be watching out for that um when do we expect the the final uh, final decision we don't know it could come out um late tonight maybe tomorrow morning um uh no probably tomorrow tomorrow uh, or maybe sunday morning we don't know we'll see um but definitely we will be here watching out for that and uh check out our live coverage we have an update page for you and we can also check out my tweets um, at Pierre Nada uh, to follow what's happening here in Glasgow. So again, uh, thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.